So, Ender 5 Plus, gigantic machine, 3D printer. So, it just finished the Eiffel Tower. So, some monkeys, I made these out of wood, wood filament. It's like sawdust, but they make the filament out of this. There's wood, this one's plastic, that's PLA plastic. And look, here's the, hmm, so big I can't get it in the bloody shot. Here's the Eiffel Tower that was printed on the Ender 5 Plus. Took two days, maybe longer, might have been two and a half days. It's got a little bit of stringing, as you see at the top there. See all that stringing? But I reckon it came out all right. That's printed without, put that down, without any support material. Printed the whole thing. I prefer to print without support material if I can, because to pull this support material off sometimes is an absolute nightmare. I'll show you. So, see these arms for the end of five? These are like, they bolt on to the back and like slot in. See all the, there's all the support in there. Get in focus, you stupid thing. But see all this support? Look at it. It's so horrible to get off. This is all support. And then once you finally do peel it all off, it leaves all these marks sometimes. So the support inside those holes you've got to push out. So if you can print stuff on a 3D printer without support, 80% of the time it's better to do it without support because support can be just such a fucking nightmare. Like, I've been trying to, look, peel all that off and look... It, it sticks on there like a motherfucker. It's so hard to get off. I looked on Google and there's people in Reddit and stuff on websites talking about how you can change the support settings, which I tried on this black one. I tried to change the support settings to be not, not so difficult to remove. But still, I did what people have said to make it easier to remove. Still, it was easier, but still so hard to get off. I just haven't got around to properly getting it off. But to pull all this off and clean it all up and stuff, I could literally probably make it out of steel on a CNC machining center I have down there. So I might as well just make them out of like aluminium or, or just mild steel if I'm going to spend, you know, two hours cleaning up something that I've 3D printed. So I might as well just not use the 3D printer if it gets to that point. So I've got to... Fanic Control, Morisiki, MV40, machining center that I use all the time to make shit. And here's a lathe, a Victor V-Turn 26. This is a CNC lathe that we turn up. This is what I turned up uh, two days ago. Turned up these that go into an FX Holden diff housing. These are threaded plugs. We upgrade the housings. And then the holes are done on that. CNC, I mean, yeah, CNC Machining Center, Morisiki, use Mastercam, Mastercam X, what is it, X5, Mastercam 15, all these Pro Lockers, Diff Locks were turned on that Victor V-Turn 26, these have been sitting here for years, TJM sell them now. So we just have all these parts from like, I don't know, 20 years ago. You could put them all together and sell all them one day, maybe. I don't know. I haven't got around to it. It's a bit hard to see, but... Oh, no, it's coming right out. It's a bit hard to see because it's a bit dark in here, but that light turns on. The light there. Well, that's, a, that's a 14 by 1 mil pitch tap. We were doing, had the dad, we get the BMW diffs, take them out, machine them off because BMW weld the crown wheels onto the carriers instead of bolt them on. Dad machines them off, grinds them on the uh, grinder, and then I put them on here and run the program. Uh, a carbide 12mm, 4 fluted M mil, 
comes down. I've got videos on YouTube showing it. Does the holes, does, does the counter bore, and then the tap comes in, taps them, and then we put them on the Quaif LSDs over there. Here's a box. We just did one a couple of days ago for Southern BM. But if I have to pull off all this bloody support material, which is almost impossible to pull off unless you have, like, pliers, I might as well just make them out of steel. Look at the uh, CR10 V3. I'm making... Do it, it's doing a spiral... Uh, spiral cylindrical blah blah whatever they fucking call it on Cura the slicing program it's going around like a thread instead of doing a layer then going up point one or point two or point three whatever you set your layer height to and then doing then doing the next layer it's going around like a thread so it's going like this woo, woo, like a thread Vars mode, they also can call that. Vars mode. This is a cap that's going to go over the top of something that holds these nozzles I'm making. Yeah, doesn't that look sick? The Eiffel Tower. It's pretty big too, look at it. Bloody huge, man. Uh... <clears throat> Pretty good detail that you can get out of these. Jeez, I just got another phone call. You gotta put your phone in flight mode so you don't get phone calls when you're making videos. Your phone call, it stops the fucking recording. But I just walked upstairs and where is it? Anyway, look at this colour. This is like a copper coloured spool of filament. Look what I'm printing, isn't that sick? It's gonna, I'm going to print my own mask. It's on 89%. It's going to be a skull. That, that, that infill, I mean, um, that support. So there's a support there, support there. And then there's like a bit of support on the teeth there. That'll all just peel off. But, um... This is going to be a mask. So I'm going to walk to Southland, go into Southland with this on my face. <laughs> Everyone will be like, what the fuck? There's no law that's saying that you can't wear this as a mask. 3D printed mask. It's going to look sick.